Hello everybody. Uh, here's doing the Easter readings. So I'm sorry I've got a bit of a cold, but anyway, I'll still try. And Pauline will give some thoughts. It's John 12, and starting at verse 1. Six days before the Passover, Jesus arrived in Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here a dinner was given in Jesus' honour, and Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume, and she poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief, a keeper of the money bag. He used to help himself to what was put into it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you. But you will not always have me. That's it. Right, so today just a few thoughts on Mary at Bethany. There's a few Marys in the Bible, but uh, this one is a special one, as well as Jesus' mother being special. On the evening before Palm Sunday, the Jewish Sabbath having finished on Saturday evening at 6 p.m., Jesus and his disciples were on the way to Bethany, just a few miles away from Jerusalem. Lazarus and his two sisters, Mary and Martha, had invited them to a meal. Not to be missed, an Eastern meal is not measly, food is plentiful. Matthew and Mark also write about this time, but say the meal was served at Simon's home. He had been a former leper. Maybe he'd been healed by Jesus, we don't know. Perhaps his house was bigger than that at Lazarus. We don't know. The main thing was the food. Practical Martha was serving the guests and Lazarus was probably the host along with Simon. The place must have been buzzing with people talking and eating. In the midst of all this activity, Mary appeared, carrying a large, beautiful jar. If valued at the auction, uh, Antiques Roadshow, it would make people gasp at the price. And if the auctioneer knew its contents, a lot more, we are told a whole year's wages. It was kept for very special occasions. In the Gospels, Mary's name is mentioned three times, always at the feet of Jesus in worship. The first time, in Luke chapter 10, verses 32 to 42, she sat at the feet of Jesus, listening, along with others, to what he was saying. It was God's word to her. The second time is in John 11, verse 28 to 32. Jesus had heard that Lazarus had died four days previously. The sisters were naturally very upset. Their security had gone. How would they manage? Jesus went to visit them. He asked to see Mary after he'd spoken to Martha. She ran to his side and fell at his feet in a very sorrowful state, but felt comforted by his presence. The third time was in John chapter 12, verses 1 to 8, which we have just had read to us. Complete with heavy jar, she knelt down at the feet of Jesus and in worship opened the jar and poured out its contents on his feet, then wiped them with her hair. 
Oh, what a sweet fragrance filled the air. It was shared by all the guests, but it was specially for Jesus. It was a special herbal root called nard, grown in India. And because it came a long way from India to Palestine, it was very expensive. Better than anything from Airwick or Febreze. <laughs> of course, somebody had to complain. It was Judas, the treasurer of what little money Jesus and the disciples had. What a waste! Should have been sold and the proceeds given to the poor. It reminds me of the advert for the house buying at the housewarming, a lady asked, how much did it cost? This was followed by an awkward silence. Jesus rebuked Judas. He was not a happy man. Jesus went on to say, Mary has blessed him through this act and strengthened him for his forthcoming or ordeal, death on the cross. Our custom is to usually, at the funeral celebration of our loved ones, one's lives, that we say all the nice things about them. Wouldn't it be good to know how much we appreciated them while they are still with us? Mary encouraged Jesus as she followed his teaching and way of life. Remembering the three times her name is mentioned in the Gospels, First, at the feet of Jesus, Mary found her blessing. And at the feet of Jesus, Mary brought her burdens. And at the feet of Jesus, the third time, Mary gave her best. What have we to bring to Jesus? As Isaac Watts wrote that very lovely hymn, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, the last verse says, were the whole realm of nature mine that were an offering far too small love so amazing so divine demands my soul my life my all let us pray heavenly father we thank you that you have a place for each one of us and i just pray today that anyone listening who might be in that merry position, but longing to touch Jesus, to encounter him and to know his presence. Well, Lord, now is our opportunity. May we take it with both hands and come to Jesus. This is the time and make the cross meaningful in our lives. Amen. <laughs>